Alright, so today we're going to be doing a very simple animation as well as going ahead and importing a Mixamo animation. So real quick before we get started on that, I do want to go over a few things. So in testing before this tutorial, I realized that Mixamo really doesn't like when you have an A-frame. So prior to this, I had something that was a little bit more of an A-frame style pose. So something more like this. So Mixamo, the rest pose, whatever the rest pose is, is how the bone map will recognize the base orientation of everything. So by having it as close to the base pose of Mixamo's animations as possible, in this case a perfect T pose, we end up with a much better, cleaner import of animations. So we're just going to uh, go ahead and leave it like this. I modified it through a matter of re rebuilding the rest pose. I'll leave a link in the description to that. It's only like a three minute long video. It's not all that complicated. But regardless, now we're actually back into a good T-Pose and we can go ahead and look at our animations. And I had to modify the animation to account for the T-Pose modification, but it's not much different than it was. But first, we're going to go ahead and make sure that the wave animation is not checked. This way we start from a T-Pose. We're going to go to Timeline and let's just select all of these and we're going to go down to zero and we're going to create a new keyframe. So we're just going to create a keyframe right there. We're just going to go ahead and put it into a simple position like this. Let's go ahead and make it X, pose, X symmetry. And we're just going to select all these. And the fingers can be controlled using these rigs with just the scale. So like that. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a really simple like look around animation. So it's just going to be like looking back and forth. But for this, we're going to want the entire body to turn around. So let's go ahead and select these three positions. And at about the 60 frame mark, we're just going to rotate all of them around. And we're going to rotate these two just a little bit farther. Rotate that head. And let's move it out just a little ways that way. And we're going to move up this back hand a little. That's just going to give us a nice clean turn. And then at around 120 mark, we're going to do the exact opposite. We're just going to rotate back the other way. And he's going to be looking over the other shoulder. We're going to select the keyframe at the beginning and we're going to paste it at the end. That way we have a nice loop. And we do have one minor issue here. So if we select the hand, this midway mark, we're going to move it out like this. And we're going to move this hand out like this. That way you have a nice circular motion. Now, a simple trick before we actually move to Godot, I know I, but what this is going to do is just clean up our animation a little bit. So if we select everything, we can go ahead and go down to the keyframes down here and let's move these around a little bit. So we have the position of the torso as well as the rotation of the torso in Quaternions here. And so all we're going to do is we're just going to offset some of these uh, keyframes just a little bit. Now, all this is going to do is make each of these different movements, the different rotations kind of occur at slightly offset intervals. And what that's going to do is make the different motions kind of blend together a little bit into a bit more of an organic look. You can see how the arms start moving before the hips really start moving here. And all of that can really help you. You can also play with curves later on, but that's a little bit too complex for this situation. If y'all want me to do an actual blender tutorial video on how to make some custom animations, let me know. But this will work for now. So we can go ahead and go back into Game Rig Tools. Let's go back over to NLA. And so we have our animation up here and we have the different uh, NLA animations down here. So all we're going to do is press the push down action. This is going to get us our animation down into NLA and get it saved properly. So we're just going to call this look around. And because it's the topmost stack, it's the one that previews. Now, if we go over here, we clear all these and we do from NLA. You'll notice it's a bit of an odd name. We just got to rename it to look around. All right. And then over here, we are going to want to enable the game rig, and we're going to make sure that the game rig is selected right here. I had to actually rebuild the game rig prior to this, so everything might be a little bit wonky, but I renamed everything exactly the way it was before. And then we'll just go ahead and hit Bake Action Bakery, and we'll press OK. And real quick, let's look down at our animations. So we have some duplicates here, so we're just going to delete these. So we can just delete those tracks, and we can just look, call this look around. 
and this is just going to ensure consistency here so real quick if we go ahead and hide the control rig and we play the look around yeah that looks just fine all right so what we're going to do is we're going to select that we're going to select that and we're just going to go ahead and export the gltf we're going to make sure that we have our body export which is selected objects and disabling apply modifiers so we're going to select that one right there and go ahead and export and when the little black box disappears we're good to go so if we go over to Godot, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. It would work, but I want to start from a clean slate. So if we drag in the character, we can see we've got all the basic materials defaulted. We'll just go ahead and make editable children. Set those materials up. All right. Now, if we come down to animation player, we can not loop because the animations are not actually saved separately. So if we go ahead and hit save to file, go to animations, character, looking. And just go ahead and save that make sure these are not currently saved so let's go ahead and make sure that they are saving properly so we're just going to override the animations that already exist what this is going to do is just mean that we can go ahead and manipulate the animations in here as you can see we can now set it to loop or ping pong so we'll go ahead and hit play like this and that's not that bad that actually looks pretty smooth all right so now that we have our own custom animation, let's go over how to get Mixamo animations in. So Mixamo exports in something called an FBX file. In order to import FBX files, you're going to need the FBX to GLTF file, the program rather. It's an external executable that needs to be referenced by the Godot editor in order to import FBX files into Godot. And I have a couple versions here, but the uh, G FBX to GLTF dash Windows X84 to 64.exe, that's what you're looking for. There is a Linux one, and I'll show up on screen here what the website looks like and where to go to download it. It's not all that complicated to get downloaded, but once you have it, you just navigate to that path, and that'll let you import directly into Godot FBX files. So real quick in animations, we're going to make a new folder called Imports. And we're going to go ahead and get a Mixamo file. So we have a lot of options here for what we could do. I went ahead and searched for running and make sure to select in place so that you can actually see it properly. And it looks pretty good. I'm actually not very displeased with it. We can go ahead and leave it like this and we'll just hit download. And make sure that you select with skin and you can get FBX. You can try DAE. I've never tried it before. I stick with FBX binary. Don't do any keyframe reduction and leave it at 30 frames a second. So we just go ahead and hit download right there. All right, so we've got a couple animations here. The running is the one I just downloaded. So we're just going to go ahead and copy that and let's paste it over here. We've got in the animations imports. And if we navigate back to Godot, it'll go ahead and import that FBX just fine. And when we select it, you'll notice the T-pose and the character here. This can actually be used in Godot. You can actually use it as just a temporary character. However, the interesting part about it is the actual T-pose. So this is what the bone map needs to map this animation to your character perfectly. If your character is rigged up like this, it will be a perfect one-to-one. -one. So if we go up to Skeleton 3D, we need to go ahead and select a new bone map. And for Mixamo in particular, this is actually not complicated at all, as it auto-fills the names. In the latest version of Godot, it's actually been pretty well modified, the bone maps, the autofill for Godot. However, if you do have any issues, there will be a bone map that is saved for this rig inside of the folder. If you ever have any issues, just default back to this one. So we're just going to call this Mixamo Bone Map. All right, so make sure to save that. Make sure all the little dots are green and they've all been selected to the proper fingers or what have you. Mine are all looking good, so we're just going to leave that blank. And we're going to go ahead and take the animations. So Mixamo Com is the animation we're looking for, so we're just going to select that. We're going to go to Animations, go to Import, and let's call this Running Forward Import. Okay, and we'll go ahead and re-import right there. Now, in order to get the animation on the actual character that we have here, you can go over to Animation, select and Manage Animations, and here we have the different libraries. And if this had not been imported properly, like the actual animations were not imported, all these would be grayed out because you can't edit these. But since we imported them properly, we can. But let's go up here and hit select add library. And we're just going to call this imported. And we're going to make sure to real quick save this library. The reason why is if we ever have any problems with this scene and we need to recreate this character for any reason, it's really handy to have the library saved out separately so we don't lose any data. 
So if we go ahead and select that, and we just select the running forward import, press OK, and we select running forward, and let's go ahead and hit that on loop. We now have our running forward animation. And this looks real clean. And so now we have all Mixamo animations are available to us, which is a massive library. As you can see, just in running, we have three pages of animations here. And it is very handy to have. And now we can actually proceed. So next up, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working with animation trees. So I'm going to work around how to run in different directions using a blend tree. And then also how to have blending of the upper body and the lower body to be playing separate animations. We're going to go over all of that. And then following that, we'll probably go into actually how to fire off call methods from animations, how we can have events for like foot steps or gunshots whenever the animation plays things like that so we're going to go into all that but for now this is all we're going to do so thank you all for listening and for watching and i hope you all have a wonderful day and we'll see you all back next week